If you're like our family, you've probably got several decks of cards laying around. So grab one and take it out to the shop because it's going to help you with building, setup, and a few things you might not have thought about. Let's jump in right to the first one. And that's the problem of mounting inset drawer fronts. I love the look of an inset drawer on furniture and I've used it in a lot of different projects. But if you don't get that reveal just right, it can look really wonky. So how do you get the exact spacing on your drawer front for a beautiful reveal all around? So I'm gonna call the first trick the ace of spacers. And I'm gonna take the drawer front and it's inset here, but how do I get it exactly where I want it? Now you can just eyeball it or you can take the measurements, but there's a much simpler way. All we're gonna do is take the drawer front and put it all the way to the left and then of course it's going to be resting on the bottom. So now my gap is along the top and along the other side and we're tight down here in this lower corner. Now I'm going to take my deck of cards and I'm just going to stuff in as many as I can in between the top and the drawer front. So that's it about right there. That's a real nice tight fit. Now I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. So now I can take them out and count them and it looks like we have 10 cards here and an ace high flush. That's it. Cool. So I'm going to separate these into two piles of five so that we'll have half on each. I can count the ones over here on the edge. It looks like we have nine. So this is uneven, but that's okay. I will just have a stack of four and a stack of five. So now I can take my two stacks of five and I will raise up the drawer and just put them underneath. And now what that's going to do is that's going to give me half of the spacing down below on two sides to make it even, and that will give me the exact same half spacing on the top. So it is now perfectly aligned top to bottom, and I'm just gonna do the same thing left to right. And for that stack of nine, separated in half, I'm gonna have five over on this side and four on this side. And it's okay if you're off by one card. So now with them stuffed in here, my drawer is completely and perfectly spaced. Now all you need to do is put a clamp in there, pull it out and secure it from the back. Or if I had a drawer pull, I could run screws through the front and then pull it out, attach it from the back and replace it. And you will have perfect drawer spacing every time. All right, the next card trick is gonna help you out if you're ever using one of these, which is a flush cut saw. So I've been using flush cut saws a lot to trim dowels if I'm ever trying to plug a hole. And actually, it's really cool to make your own custom dowels. I cut these out of cedar on my modern outdoor chair build. So after you plug those holes and you wanna cut it flush, it's really easy to hit the surface of the wood and really scar it up. I actually did this on the walnut coffee table that I made a few years back. And that was before I found out a trick, the hole in one. For this next one, we just need a single playing card, but uh, actually we need a hole in it. So uh, huh, I think that'll work. Now you can get a hole in the playing card any way you want to. I just used a drill bit and drilled it through. And once you have that, you can put that right on top of your dowel and then just take your flush cut saw and lay it right on top of the card and saw off the plug. That way the wood underneath is completely protected. You just remove the card and then you can sand it flush with your sander and you're good to go. Now this next trick is really gonna help you out when you are setting up machines or just setting up things in your shop to get them just right and get your machines in perfect working order. We'll call this one the Royal Flush. About 18 months ago, I finished my miter saw station, which I absolutely love. If you wanna get one, plans down below, link in the description. And one of the things that you really need is a flush surface across both sides and as well as your table saw. But I wanted to make sure that I could use any miter saw in here and not have to change everything around. So I made it four inches and then I can just shim up for the saw that I'm using. So I put my miter saw in there and I actually had some hardwood shims that I used on the miter cart, which I went ahead and put in as well under the feet. When I laid my straight edge across, there was just a little bit of gap and it was a little bit off. So things are catching as I was moving them around. So we can use some playing cards to shim it up. So to get things flush, with the Royal Flush, we can just use cards as shims. Now, the great thing is, is that these are pretty consistent in thickness. If I measure these, these come up right at 10 mils, which would be 10 thousandths of an inch. Uh, this one did come up as 12. So I would just take a measurement and I would use the 10 mil ones versus a thicker card. And if you do have some really cheap thinner cards, you can be even a little more accurate because the thinner it is, the more you can stack in there and the finer adjustment you can get. But these will work perfect. So I can just use the playing cards and see how many fit underneath in between the top of the miter saw and my straight edge. Yep, two should be just perfect. So we can use those shims to go right underneath the shims we already have there. I'll do two in the back as well. 
And now we're flush with the outfeed here. So let me take this off and test it. Now the board can slide straight across without hitting it. Now the miter saw is one example, but also setting up machines is another place where you can use these shims, especially on the infeed and outfeed tables or fences, getting everything aligned. If you need a little bit of shim, just grab your playing card. It'll help you get your machines set up perfectly. Now, if you need to get some machines, the sponsor of today's video is Woodcraft. Woodcraft is like a toy store for woodworkers. So whether you need a Craig Foreman or a router table or a bandsaw or a drill press, they've got you covered. They've also got any kind of supplies and materials that you might need for your projects. You can check them out online at woodcraft.com. I'll have a link down below in the description. They also have over 70 stores here in the US. So if you have one close to you, you can go in and check out the tools, get your hands on them and see what they really look and feel like before you make your purchases. A big thank you to Woodcraft for being an awesome sponsor of the channel. And this next trick is a sneaky one because it's going to help you sneak up on the perfect cut. And there's a lot of times in woodworking when we have an existing opening, maybe it's a face frame or anything else, and you need to fit a piece of wood in between there. So obviously we're going to take our measurements and see what our opening is. And we're just over 11 inches, but of course you want that fit to be really tight and it's hard to get it exactly right. So for a cut like this, I typically go to my table saw sled or you could do it on a miter sled and I'll use a stop block because I want to make sure that I get that exact cut and then I don't don't have gaps on either end. So I'll typically cut it just a hair over just to make sure that it's not undersized. And after that first cut, it never seems to fit. It's just a little bit oversized because we went on the high side. And so I will go over and bump it just a little bit, make another cut. And trying to sneak up on that cut, you just start tapping along on that stop lock just a little bit at a time, making a new cut. Just tap, 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 just happy Gilmoring it the whole way until this happens. All right, this has got to be it. Oh, come on! That's your home! Are you too good for your home? Why does this always happen? So to fix this, we'll use the disappearing gap trick. Now I have the two of diamonds right here, but uh, actually, I think the two of spades works a little bit better, and they're both ten thousandths of an inch thick. And what we can do is use these as a shim right on the stop block. So I've got a new piece here, and I reset the stop block at just over 11 inches, and I'm going to make my first cut. Now just like before, we are a little bit long, so I'm going to go and start with one playing card and make the next cut. All right, now we are still just a little bit short, but I'll just keep adding cards to the stop block and making cuts until I get that perfect fit. Oh yeah. Looks like two cards was the perfect fit. No more gaps. And this next trick is going to help you sand in some tight spots or some weird angles. I don't have any fun card tricks to show you because I'm out and the other ones weren't that great anyway. If you did think they're okay, let me know in the comments. And if you are a magician, I'm sorry for your pain. So I've got a piece of cherry here that I routed a cove profile on and there's some burning on the inside which you'll get a lot with cherry. Definitely can't use an orbital or a sanding block. I would have to really get that by hand. I'm going to take two decks of cards, full decks, and I'm going to put them together. You could even do three. And then I'm going to put a rubber band around them lengthwise to hold them all together. So now we have these all together here and I can kind of push on these and they stay in place. I actually saw this technique on C. Jane Drill and she has a video where she did this and showed using it as a contour gauge. And she'd also showed using one or two cards to sand really fine things. And I thought, why not combine the both of them? So now you just take a piece of flexible sandpaper and I'm gonna call this trick the contortionist because we can now wrap the flexible sandpaper around the contour gauge put it to whatever shape we need and use this to sand into any tight spots or odd shapes and press that in here. And now I can keep the pressure on it and just sand back and forth. And that's going to get every part of that groove all at once. Now it's not perfect, but it's way better than trying to do it by hand. And of course, as Jane showed, you can use this as a contour gauge, but if you're going to do that, I would recommend turning it around and using the short end because it just seems to be a little bit easier because they don't want to flex left and right. But we could put that right into the contour of this groove and then have a little perfect representation of it right here in the cards. Everybody loves a good card trick, right? <laughs> but not this one. This one with a hole in it. I'm like, or chicken wing. 